Okay, so welcome year eight to another distance learning lesson. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be answering the question, what extent was the European empire built on slavery? And this is probably going to take us the next two lessons, okay? But as always, before any lesson, um, we basically need to make sure we have actually remembered and learned previous information. So what I'd like you to do now is answer these questions, okay? So make sure you have a pen and um, some paper, uh, probably two pens, a green pen as well, to make sure you can then mark your work. And what I would like you to do is I would like you to now answer these questions in your book. Okay, I'm gonna go through the answers in a second. So what I'd like you, I'd like you to do is pause the video and answer those questions. This should take you about four minutes. Off you go. Press pause and answer the questions. Okay, welcome back. So I'm gonna go through some of the answers now. An empire is when one country controls another country. Well, how developed was Africa? Africa was very developed. Um, it had culture, trade, religion, society was organized and it even had um, large amounts of gold and other resources. How, well, how rich was Mansa Musa? Extremely, he was one of the richest, if not the richest person in the world. Huge amounts of gold, huge, huge, huge amounts. What is a colony? This is a country controlled by an empire. Okay, why did Europeans build empires? Um, so I'm going to draw an arrow there for increase, increase their money, uh, power, um, to, because other ones were, uh, other Europeans were building empires, so we wanted to compete, there's a bit of competition, and spread their religion, spread their religion. Okay, so to answer the question, what extent was the European empire built on slavery? What we need to do is we need to actually unpick this a bit. We've already, we already know what European empire is, we did that lesson. Now we need to have a look at what slavery actually is. Okay, so slavery, I'll just put the title there. Now, what I'd like you to do is as I'm talking, you need to make sure you are paying attention, so you're listening but you could also make a few notes. So if you get a piece of pe paper and a pen, you can be writing a few keywords down, a few definitions to help you remember, okay? Because then when you're doing your red zone, you'll have something to look, look back to instead of going over and over the video lots and lots of times. Okay, so slavery. Well, slavery is when one person owns and controls another. Okay, so for example, if one person is chained up and they can't go where they want, that person might be, might be in slavery. If that person is then forced to work for another and punished, they may be a slave. So if they're owned and controlled by another, so this person here is forcing this person to work. So it's showing the control element. And this person is not free. So it's showing how one person is owned by another. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a few, um, a few, examples and you're going to tell me if it's a slave or not a slave so the question is is this a slave ok 
Okay, so if I just... Okay, here are three um, examples we took that we're going to look at. So when a person is not free, e.g. Um, in prison, when a person works for another and is controlled at work, when a person is kept or forced to stay somewhere and they are forced to work for that person. Okay, so is the first one. Well, actually, I'll give you a chance to pause it and give yourself a chance about two minutes to work out which of these are slavery. Could be all three, might only be one, might be two. Off you go. Okay, welcome back. Well, let's start with this one here. When a person is kept or forced to stay somewhere, so we've got the control elements, they're not free. And they're forced to work. Well, if they're forced to work for that person, and they're not allowed to go where they want at all, this is very much like slavery. When a person works for another and is controlled at work, well, when they work for another and is controlled at work, well, we need to look at what we mean by work. Are they paid? If they're paid, probably not slavery okay because i i work for another and i'm controlled i'm not allowed to break the rules at work but i'm paid so it's not slavery i'm choosing to work for that person this one here there's an element of choice here this one there isn't because they're kept and forced they're forced to work for the person okay so this is not slavery and when a person is not free or well, slavery slaves aren't free but eg in prison it's slightly different in prison because there is an end date They're not working. And they're not fully controlled. So actually this isn't slavery either, just this one. Okay. Now, what I am gonna do now is I'm gonna to explain to you what the slavery system was like. And we call it the Atlantic slave trade. The Atlantic slave trade. Now, what we mean by that is it takes part in the Atlantic. So, mind my um, dodgy drawing. Here's Britain. This is Europe. This is Africa, which is massive, by the way. And right now, over here, we've got North America, the Caribbean, West Indies, and then we've got South America here. Now, what happened is People in Europe had a lot of money, okay? And they started building empires. They started discovering places. We started discovering places. Discovering means finding. So what we started doing is we started going to these places. So for instance, we went to Africa, we then went to the Caribbean and then we then went, came, we came back. Now here, we actually started turning these places into colonies. Remember it's a place controlled by an empire. So we've started building our empire now. And first off, we started sailing to these places. Okay, we were sailing to these places. And we were trading, so we were buying things and we were selling things. So we were buying and selling, trade. But what started to happen is we started to buy people and we turned them into slaves. So we then took those people over to the colonies and we then made them. So sometimes you've heard it could be called, you might've heard it be called the triangle trade because we went there, then there, then there. In total, over 12 million people 
are taken from Africa to the Americas. 12 million. That is a huge number. Okay. Now, this is where we're going to have a few questions. Okay. So, Europe, Africa, Americas. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask you what happens somewhere, and you're going to write down in your book what happens there. Okay. So, in the Atlantic slave trade, what happens here? Number one. What happens at number one? Write that down in your piece of paper. Okay, we're going to go on number two now. If you haven't finished, pause it and give yourself a chance to finish it. If not, let's carry on. What happens here? Number two. Okay, again, if you need a little bit more time, pause it. Right, this time, what happens at number three? Okay, pause it if you need to. What happens at number four? Remember, this is Europe, this is Africa, and this is the Americas. Okay, let's go to the answers. Well, here, this is when ships set sail to Africa, carrying money and goods, things to trade. Here, this is where people are forced to work. Okay, so this is when people are forced to work for slavery. Here, this is when people are moved, transported from one side to another. And be really specific, we've got 12 million, so that's six zeros. And here, this is when we trade. So things are bought and sold, including people, and people are captured as well. Okay, now, there's a little work. So that is what happens at a basic level. But now we're going to delve a little bit deeper into this now. So make sure you're paying attention because it will get complicated now. now. Here, this is where we set off. This is where the ship is bought and it's where things are put on the ship to trade here. You can't get to Africa if you haven't got food on ship, if you haven't got sailors, and you can't go if you haven't got anything to trade with. You cannot just pick people up in Africa because there were countries there which would fight. They didn't want to give slaves away. They actually were buying and selling. So they're not going to give anything away for free. So you've got to have men and you've got to have money and you've got to have things to sell. So it may be, you might want diamonds to sell. You might want clothes or textiles. Things to sell because they're not just going to give you it. To do this, you need a huge amount of money. Now, most people didn't have the money needed, so they needed something called an, inv an investor. This is someone with a huge amount of money. What they were going to do is they were going to lend, lend money to the person on the ship, but only if they received money back. So they might lend a thousand pounds, but they expected on return, so when we got back from the Atlantic slave trade, to receive even more. So they would give you money, but they expected more money. So we'll draw it even bigger, more money back. They expected profit. Profit is when you make money off something. So I sell you, I give you five pounds, you give me back seven pounds, I make two pounds profit. Okay, now, what I'd like you to do is I would like you to answer this question. How important were the investors? 
how important were they on a scale of one to 10? 10 being the most important thing in the world. Oh, you can't see that, sorry. 10 being the most important thing in the world, zero being, well, awful, can't, can't work. Make sure you've had a think. Okay, well, I mean, this is down to you, it's your choice, but were they as important as the people on the slave ships? Were they as important as the sailors? It's up to you. Well, if the slave ship or the owner of the ship, if they didn't have any money, could they have gone and traded? Probably not. So they're going to be important, aren't they? Could they have bought slaves that money? No, they couldn't. So very important. Are they as important as the traders, though? So these are the people on the actual ship. Are they as important as them? Well, it's a bit of a catch-22, really. Which comes first, chicken or the egg? They can't work without the money. And they can't give someone the money without it. So it's a bit of a unanswerable question, really. But I'd say probably investors, because even at the slave ships, the investors would want to make money and would probably find someone else to do it. They'd probably find some other way to make money from slavery. Okay. Now, what happened here? We are going to look at more, more in more depth in a few lessons, but here is where they use that money and they use those textiles and goods to buy people. They buy people. Sometimes they captured them themselves, but there was slavery already present in Africa, which we've already looked at. So they bought people. Then they put these, they turned these people into slaves, put them in irons, and then they transported them over 12 million here. And they made them work. They sold them at auction. So they sold them to the highest bidder. So people were literally say, bidding, saying, I'll pay this much for this person. And they put them to work. Where they put them to work was on something called a plantation. Now a plantation is a farm where slaves were forced to work. They created cotton, sugar, and tobacco. Now these are really, really important. They're working here because it's really, really hot. So it's really, really hard. Making sugar is really tough work. Now we do it by machines, but using people do it's really, really tough work. Cotton is also extremely hard because it's a spiky bush that you've got to sort of bend down. It's going to hurt your back. So you're picking it up off the floor. It's hurting you. You're going to have to put it in your backpack. We have to work for over 12 hours. It's really, really tough. Now, to make sure we don't forget any of that, what I would like you to do now is I would like you to define the word plantation. Okay? Define the word plantation. Tell me what that plantation means. Okay. Well, it means a farm where slaves were forced to work and they grew sh sugar, cotton and tobacco. I'd now like you to answer the question, why were slaves required here? Why were slaves required, needed here? Why were they needed here? Okay, well, 
Why were they needed? Because these were the colonies. These were the empire's colonies. So they needed to help the colony grow. And why were colonies and empires needed? To make money. Also, it was very, very hot and difficult to work here. These were difficult things to grow. So they wanted someone or people that they knew they could force to work. And that's why they needed slaves. Okay, the last mission, the last part of the slave trade was all of the cotton, sugar, and tobacco. So I'm going to draw you some sugar cubes here, a cotton plant and a pipe for tobacco. All of these were made here by slaves. So very, very little amounts of money were required to make these. But when we brought them back here, so a small amount of money, but when we brought them back here, they were worth a huge amount, absolutely loads. So now you could sell them for a lot of money. Also, cotton, you can turn from what they call a raw material, so something that um, is very similar to how it is grown. We can put it into a factory and we can turn it into clothes. And we can buy that or make that cheaply because it's made by uh, slaves who aren't paid. And we can sell it for a huge amount of money. So people made a lot of money from slavery. Also, the last thing you've got to do is you've got to give your investor their money back. So the investors are getting money, factory workers are getting money, and the people who are actually selling it to the factory worker, they're making money. So as soon as it gets off the ship, they sell it to the factory for money, and they make even more. The whole while, any little piece of money that is changed hands, so all of this money goes to the government, goes to the monarch, the king or queen, and to parliament. So I've drawn two people speaking there for parliament, because that's what parliament do. And that is in tax. Now, that then leads us to our mighty, mighty red zone, which we're going to have to do, is who benefited the most? First thing you need to do there is identify who benefited. So different groups. Now, you can be really, really creative with this. For instance, slaves were kept on the ship well you wanted to control them so you needed guards so well that's a job those people benefited you can need more food to feed the slaves well then the person growing the food is going to benefit okay you can be really 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 creative with this so identify who then you need to identify how they benefit Okay, so you could just have bubbles everywhere and it could be um, this person is an investor and it could be three or four bullet points. How they benefit. Okay, and then I'd like you to rank them. So rank them in order. So this might be number two, this might, might be number four, this might be number one, one being the most, and your, however low, your high your numbers go, is up to you, but you need to explain it. So why are they number one? Why are they number four? Why is this person more, benefiting more than this person? Why is this person making more money than that person? Why is that person making less money than that person? Okay? That's what you need to do. Rank, 
and give reasons. So I would set it out like this, I'd identify my people, you'd have plenty more than this, identify how they benefit, rank them, and then give a reason why they're there. Why is that more than that? Okay, well, pleasure teaching you. Hopefully we'll see you back in school soon. Bye bye, you mate.